Look at that. Look at this. An iOmega zip drive. I was always fascinated by these as a kid. I loved their color for one thing. Uh, they were always mounted on top of beige boxes like this one over here. So they really stood out. And on top of that, they were discs that I could use as a kid to put all my pictures and games on. 100 megabytes of space. And it was writable, which was super cool when the zip drive first came out. And it happens to be a SCSI zip drive, which means that it's compatible with the SCSI card that we installed previously. Since I have the stereo card installed as well, I also have speakers set up. Stereo sound. So unfortunately, this is a little post 2GS era, but uh, I mean, it's compatible and the hard drives for this are quite expensive. So we can treat a 100 megabyte disc as a hard drive since usually at the time, 100 megabytes would be quite respectable anyway. So why don't we plug it in? Turning this thing around is always a huge hassle. Ugh, it's very heavy. Ah. Boy, it's getting harder and harder to get back here. Uh, you can see here the port for the SCSI card that we previously installed. It just so happens I have a cable that fits that. I have come across a lot of cables that are actually uh, female on this end, which doesn't work when you have a adapter like that, or a port rather. So let's uh, get that plugged in and then turn her back around. Another cool thing about zip drives is they are made to be mounted vertically. Looks good. So the whole point of having a hard drive is to finally, after all this time, install the operating system that was designed for the Apple II GS GSOS. We will need a mouse for that. Here we have a nice ADB mouse. One button. One cool thing about ADB was that oftentimes they would uh, chain them together like so. You actually plug it right into the keyboard like a modern USB. Computer, install GSOS. No response. Ah, the ball mouse. Nothing like the rustic wholesomeness of dragging a steel ball around to move the cursor. Thanks to ADT Pro, uh, the software also previously demonstrated, I made a set of Apple II GSOS system disks to install it onto a hard drive. Of course, a zip drive requires a zip disk. Here we have a fancy zip disk. I never did understand the cases, but uh, once again, I just thought the idea of having a hundred megabytes of whatever you wanted on a disc that you could rewrite was just the coolest thing. Oh, I forgot, we need power. Now to slide in the zip disc. The disc we need, of course, is the Apple II GS install disc because we're gonna install the uh, OS, right? So let's slide that in. Goldilocks, activate. And here we go. I said, and here we go. Why is it hanging? Okay, let's try that again. So once we have our zip drive in there, we'll put in the install disk. It's actually important in this particular setup to have the zip disk in the drive when I start the computer. Uh, for some reason, it, uh, it won't boot if there's no disk in there. It doesn't properly detect that uh, that there's something to boot off of when there's nothing in the in the zip drive with the install disk in there let's start her up here we go welcome to the 2gs system 6.0.4 hey there's a little artist's rendition of goldilocks so we just wait for that to load. Scanning all the disk drives multiple times for efficiency's sake. <laughs> so this is the weird part. I have to remove the zip drive, sorry, zip disk, and then put it back in for it to detect that it has a new disk that it can read. The disk and device Apple SCSI .hd01.00 appears to be in HFS format. 
installing file system HFS FST using the installer allows GSOS to use the disk. HFS is widely used on the Macintosh, so it's already aware of the existence of its competition. Let's initialize. Goldilocks entered the bear's cabin, so the hard drive should be cabin. Now we only have one choice here uh, for what kind of file system to use, and that's ProDOS. That's probably because it needs to be ProDOS if you're going to install GSOS onto it. Once you have the full system installed, you can actually make the disk HFS instead, like it said in that little warning screen. In the meantime, let's do ProDOS cabin and initialize. Initializing. Look at that amber LED spaz out. It's working all right. Still going. Yeah, this is taking a while. Oi, computer, hurry it up. This whole video is going to end up being stupid quips if it doesn't finish soon. All right, finally. It now says click easy update to install Apple 2GS system software on disk cabin. So it is ready to go. We can hit the customize option. Please wait, searching for update scripts. Disk to update. Uh, that's the wrong one. So we hit the disk button to change which disk it is. We're looking for cabin. There we go. Disk to update cabin. Always got to be careful not to update the wrong disk. So we already have system six. Here are some important utilities that we need to have for GSOS to really be all it can be. We need the advanced disk utility and luckily we can select multiple of these by holding down that Apple key. Apple Bowl, that's just a game I think. Archiver, seems like it should be useful. Synthlab, sounds fun. Teach, gotta do that. Control Panel Sounds, this is a GSOS. GS, Graphics and Sound. Calculator, we're gonna want all these file systems. All the fonts, thank you. Once you have everything you want selected, just hit install. The script application SynthLab installs the files necessary for you to use the SynthLab application. Install this on your System Stick System 6 startup disk. That's what I'm trying to do. Perform this update. It's going to ask me to perform this update on every one of these, isn't it? This is probably going to take another five ages. So for the next five years or so, I'm going to be changing the disks that uh, it wants to complete the installation of the uh, GSOS there. So let's do it. Luckily, it does automatically detect when you slide in the appropriate disk, but it still has to double check all the other drives to make sure that they're not there. So I gotta say, if you wanna make this process significantly faster, I would leave out the five and a quarter inch floppy drives because every time the installer needs a new disk, it looks through every drive to find it and then asks you for it. While I'm installing this, another thing to point out is that these floppy disks um, are necessarily double density disks, just DD. Uh, it says one megabyte on the little flap here, but not just any three and a half inch floppy will do it. Installing and or removing files. Don't remove my files. Insert the disk install. Here you go. Reading. Writing. Oh, it's finally done. The installation script has been successfully executed. Yes. Okay. So I guess that must mean we can boot off the zip drive now. Single-handed double draw. Let's do our handy dandy Apple control power. Let go of the power but keep the other two. Here we go, we're booting. Look at that thing fly. Coolies. Boot icon. Now I get it. So there's a little switch on the back of the zip drive here uh, that allows it to identify itself as SCSI drive five or six. What that is, is a sort of identification system so that uh, the computer knows which one has boot priority. I set it at five, for example, because I actually am going to have another hard drive that I'm going to install here, which I will put at a higher SCSI number um, so that it has boot priority. There it is, Apple II GSOS. 
You have all the important bits installed. This is a very bare bones GSOS. Let's make it fancy now. You gotta have screensavers after all. And that desktop has got to go. In a later video, we'll look at some other software that you can put onto the 2S GS OS. <laughs> you know what I mean. You can get all sorts of great software uh, on the internet. Uh, there's various websites that uh, have some repositories of Apple 2GS software. Using ADT Pro, you can just put them onto disks and uh, load them up. Maybe we'll play some games too. Oh, what? <laughs>